Hello, 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 and welcome to yet another Grasshopper tutorial. And this is kind of like continuation of the previous one, where I'm basically creating parametric patterns for walls. And by the end of the these tutorials, I will be um, ordering a CNC mill of a portion of them. So that's that's kind of exciting. Yeah. I guess without any further ado, we, we, we should begin. So this is going to be a slightly different pattern from what we've had last time. Um, I'm thinking diamond pattern, and for that we will be using Lunchbox plugin. And Lunchbox, Lunchbox can be just straight up downloaded from Food for Rhino for free. Um, so yeah, get it if you don't have it. And what we are looking for are panels, under panels, diamond panels, this one right here. So I'm gonna put this down here. It asks us of three things, as an input surface, a starting kind of surface for it to divide up into diamond panels and U and V count. So for our starting surface, I'm just actually going to draw a rectangular region, which is gonna be like a, just a rectangle. I'll start drawing it from zero. I'll just um, specify like three by two meters, you know, something that's the size of a small wall. So 3000 by 2000 millimeters, rectangle. Reference it in as a curve. Plug that in. And you can see that since it's a flat rectangle, it gets red as a surface. It's quite easy for, for um, grasshopper to convert it into a surface. And I'm also going to use bifocals just so that you can see uh, the names of the components that I'm using. Okay, so for U and V count I will use something like 5 uh, just so that we're using low resolution. Uh, we're working in low resolution. If we mess something up it won't crash our file. All right, so we can see the output, diamonds and triangles, those are like two different outputs that we get from this node, and the diamonds are the elements that are inside, and the triangles are all around the perimeter. And it doesn't matter how many um, divisions you use, what, what's the number of the divisions, it's always going to generate triangles around the perimeter of the um, of any kind of region that you give it. So we will need to treat these separately. And before we move on with kind of figuring out the grasshopper bit of it, we need to kind of figure out what's the goal, you know, what's the aim of what we're trying to achieve. And for that we need topology. We need to know what is the topology of this um, diamond element that we're trying to create. And what I'm thinking is, let me try and draw it with my mouse, which is going to be very nice um, and very fun. So I'm thinking if we have our initial diamond element and we create like a ribbon. Well, first of all, uh, first thing, we are going to be using sub D. There we go. We're, we're going to be using sub D. So everything is going to be smoothed out. And for that, we will need to protect the perimeters. And which means there's going to be a lot of offsetting in the world. So if we have our diamond panel and I offset it inwards once, that means the outer perimeter is uh, protected, kind of, right? Um, and then we can mess around with the vertices here and push and pull on the vertices. So I'm thinking what would happen if we, for instance, take this vertice and move it up to here, right? We distort it like that. And then we create one more offset, like that. Ah. 
yeah, you can't tell what, what the hell am I doing, right? <laughs> so we would be creating yet another offset that is also peeled up, right? So in by the end of it, we would have like a loft topology of these kind of a two ribbons that are going inwards. Then we would be creating one more that is flat underneath, and then we would just kind of fill in the the center part quite quite easily because it's just a rectangle from the top it would look like uh, one two three yeah one two three great drawing skills something like that that would be from the top with the distorted um, diamond anyhow great explanation let's begin so the first thing is, you know, to actually create the offsets. So I'm just going to scale it. I'm just going to scale the diamonds. And I'm going to scale them uh, to their center points. So I'm just going to use area to extract the area centroid of each, um, of each diamond here. And I'm going to use a factor. Actually, I'm going to use two factors. One is going to be 0.9. Yeah, one is going to be 0 0.9 and the other one is going to be 0 0.8. And I'll just use merge to merge them into one list. Come on, connect. Like that. So 90% and 80% of the size, right? Um, we merge them into one list. And I'm also going to do one, one, one not trick, but one important thing where I right click on the merge output and I graft it into two separate branches, right? So now everything after scaling, and of course I connect the merge to the scale factor, everything out of sca after scaling is gonna come out in two branches. You can see here as I hover my mouse, zero, zero and zero, one. Zero, zero branch will have everything scaled down by 90% and zero, one branch is gonna have everything scaled down by 80% or not by two 90% and two 80%. So that's the aim. All right, so now what do we actually, um, what do we actually do with them? Well, I, I kind of want to now get the, I, I kind of want an opposite. I want a list with two of these diamonds in each branch, right? So uh, let's say this one and this one, these two, I want them in one branch, these two I want in one branch, these two I want in one branch, and so on. So a trick that does that is called flip matrix. Flip matrix, we connect it like so. And just uh, to make sure that it's gonna work for all of you, I'm just going to right click on the G output of scale or the D input of flip matrix, doesn't matter. And I'll choose to simplify just to get rid of any trash in the um, data tree um, address. Okay, so we flip the matrix and now we have, as you can see, two elements in each branch and 17 branches in total or 18 branches in total. With this done, I can deconstruct these B reps, um, trying to find where the construct B rep, yeah, there we go. I can deconstruct these B reps to get their points, right? So I get these two points. Remember when I said that I will want to move up only like these two points right here? Look where my mouse is. These two points, and these two points, and these two points, only these ones. Um, this is where we do it, right? So I need to know which points are these. So I will actually use list item, list item for the vertices, and I will um, separate out these points. So item index zero, this default output, are all of the points that are on the left-hand side. Okay, that's not it. And actually, item index one are the ones that I need. They're in the bottom. So these are the ones that are going to be moving. 
uh, that are going to be moved up. And I'll just add two more outputs to get the ones on the right and the ones in the top. So plus one is the ones that we want to move. Okay, sure, we use move. For now, it's just going to be a static. Um, it's just going to be a static number. Uh, move in z-axis, meaning upwards, by 10 or whatever. Probably more than 10, right? Let's use something drastic. Let's use 100. There we go. So you can see those, those points move up. And also this is getting uh, too convoluted in terms of visuals. So I'm go going to start hiding things. I shouldn't hide that. Yeah. So I'm basically, I've hidden everything, disabled preview of everything, except for the last three nodes that we're, um, that we're working with. Okay, so the points are moved up by 100 millimeters, 10 centimeters, only the um, index one points. And then I can reconnect them into, remerge them into a list of four points by just using list, uh, not so, uh, sorry, by using merge, the merge component, and just connecting i to d1. Instead of i plus one, I'm gonna use the moved version of i plus one, then plus two and plus three, just like that, right? So now I have uh, four points in each data tree, or in each data branch, data tree branch, uh, all joined up nicely, which means I can use polyline, a polyline tool to actually connect them, right? Uh, well, it doesn't really connect. You can see that it leaves the polyline open, and that's because of the second input of the polyline, which asks, would you like it to be closed? I do, so I will just type in toggle, boolean toggle, true, and connect that to the C input of the polyline. And now it's closed. So now we get these two distorted perimeters, right? A ribbon, if you will. Uh, I will be messing around with that ribbon and creating uh, a mesh from it. But for now, just so that we are on the same page, um, I can show you how I would, I can show you a slow version of this, uh, which is not optimized, but it only requires one node, and that node is going to be loft. Before we use loft, though, we, use, we need to um, make these two polar lines actually see each other. If I were to show you the data tree, Give me a second, like that. If I were to show you a data tree like that, you can see that the uh, first you get you have one branch and then it branches out to two sub branches. One branch branches out to two sub branches. So every diamond, like main diamond, is the one branch and then it branches out, right, like that into two sub-branches. So this is sub-branch number one, sub-branch number two, sub-branch number one, number two, number one, number two, and, and so on. So we need to um, somehow merge them so that they are in one list, so that uh, branch one and two can actually see each other. A tool that does that is called trim tree. Trim data tree. Uh, I think the name of it actually explains it quite well or description of it, reduce the complexity of a tree by merging the outermost branches. That's exactly what we needed to do. And that's what it does. So now we have two elements in each branch and I can just use loft. Easy as that. We loft it, 48 milliseconds, and we have ourselves whatever, 18 ribbons or something. Great. We have like the, the first the beginning of it. <laughs> we have the beginning of it then. Now let's create a ribbon between uh, the outermost perimeter of each diamond and the, mm, the bigger, the outer perimeter of our ribbon that we have just created. 
hope that makes any sense because it surely doesn't in my head. Anyway, um, I will kind of attack it in the same way. I will just, let's move this down a bit. I will just create a deconstruct brep component, just like that. Let's drag it out somewhere here. Okay, I will use a polyline tool. Yep, come on, polyline tool with a toggle. Uh, toggled to true to actually um, create like a perimeter around each diamond, right? Um, I should probably simplify that. That feels like I should simplify that. Maybe not. I'll simplify that in just 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 in case. Okay, and this basically just gives me, let me hide that, just gives me a polyline for each diamond. Okay, now I need the outer polyline here and I can get it from um, this trim tree list here. I will just use list item to separate out the two polylines that I'm using for the loft. So this is polyline number one the outer one, exactly the one that we need. And if I used polyline number two, that would be the inner one, but I don't need it, so I'm not gonna, not gonna use it. Okay, so we have that. I will just use merge to connect them together into one list. And let's uh, simplify the inputs. I really like simplify, as you can see. Uh, let's simplify the inputs just to make sure that everything kind of connects nicely and every, everything's in a big happy family and everything works together. And let's use loft to check if we messed it up or not. Loft. And it doesn't seem like we have. All right. So we have ourselves this kind of topology. Whew. Okay, let's do Let's do more. Let us do more. So I'm gonna... No, you, you, you don't need to try and be, be silent. That's fine, the viewers understand. <laughs> All right. So I'm gonna try to scale it down, scale down the diamonds even further, right? To create one more inner ribbon. So I'll just use scale, just like that. Uh, of course, we need the center point. I keep forgetting. So let's use area. To get the center points, bam. And what's the factor? Hmm. I wonder, maybe we should use like 0. Point six or something because here we're using point 0.9, point 0.8, let's use point 0.6. Yeah, that seems like a, I'm, I'm uh, the ribbon is going to be the one in the, in, in between, right? So that feels decent. So let, let's use that. Okay. We have that going on for us. That's great. Um, and we have how many? 18 uh, and trimmed surfaces. All right, uh, I feel like this is gonna be exactly the same procedure as what we've done here. So I'm just going to borrow, deconstruct brep, list item, merge, move, unit Z, factor of 100. I could even use polyline and trim tree. Uh, actually, we don't really need to use trim tree, so I'm not gonna use that, but we can use polyline. So I'm gonna use these. Um, nodes here because all we're going to be doing is exactly the same thing as what we've done before. Uh, we're going to be taking this uh, perimeter here and we're going to be displacing one of the vertices. So let me copy, paste, Control c Control v drag it down, accidentally drag, da drag down the trim tree, drag it back <laughs> where it was. So this group right here, 
I'm just going to connect the scaled version to the deconstruct BRAP and just double check to see if Paul line actually makes what I want it to make. And it does, it does, right? So we get our inner Paul line, inner, inner most Paul line that is distorted upwards, this particular vertice. What if I don't want this particular vertice to be distorted for the inner one, I want this vertice? Well, all I need to do is figure out which vertice needs to be moved out of these four, right? So it's not going to be D1, could it be D2, or sorry, plus 2, which connects to D3? No, it's not. Okay, what about plus 3 that connects to D4? Yes, it is. Perfect. So this is the one um, that we're distorting for the most inner um, diamond. Let's move it down just a tiny bit, just like that, so that it's... Um, a little bit calmer compared to this one. All right, so we have ourselves a polar line. Great. Uh, let's simplify it. I love my simplify. Let's simplify it. And actually, let's start grouping things. So this is one. Uh, this is going to be two. This is going to be group number three. Actually, it's only this. Group number three. Um, so for this polar line, um, what do we do? What do we do? I'm feeling like for this polar line, all we need to do is just merge it into one list with um, the inner polar line or the inner rectangle of our first ribbon that we've created, which is going to be here, the index one ribbon, like that. Double check if all of them are correct, like that. Well, actually, once you use loft, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show you if, if you messed up or not. Yeah, seems to be, seems to be a-okay. We get ourselves a nice, nice loft here. By the way, if loft doesn't work for you, you can right click and choose to simplify the two inputs of the merge and that might force the loft to work. If not, rewind, look at, look at it again and, you know, probably you missed something. Also, if you can't be bothered to rewind multiple times and follow along, you can always support the channel become a Patreon, you get the files for free, just saying, link in the video description, you know the drill. All right, where was I? We need to fill, fill it up, right? We need to fill it up because this is now what's left is flat, which is basically this scaled version. So this needs to be filled up from this actual polyline. line. Let's use discontinuity for this continuity to get the control points and let's use um, actually let's use uh, construct mesh because by the end of it since we're gonna be using sub D geometry it all needs to be a mesh either way so might as well use it um, construct mesh like that thankfully every single um, geometry that we're using right now is four points, has four points. Construct Mesh actually by default works with four points. So I can just straight up connect it like that. And it's just going to create a mesh polygon right here. Awesome. All right, so now how do you, or actually now let me show you the issue. First of all, let's disable preview of everything except the lofts and the mesh. And now let's let's look at the issue. So right now we're dealing with seven divisions. That's great and all, but what if we want like 25 divisions in U direction and 25 divisions in V direction? Saw how slow it got? And if I check here, it's like half a second for this loft, almost a second for this loft, half a second for this loft, and the mesh doesn't even register. Uh, it, 
that, I mean, it, it's a good thing, by the way, <laughs> that the mesh doesn't register. It means it's fast uh, compared to the lofts. So this is what we're trying to achieve with the lofts. And also we need them to be a mesh, so might as well. Um, for that, we need to replace this with some sort of a tool that, that will do the lofting uh, with a mesh for us. And that tool is going to be, well, a little bit tricky. Let's see, you have two rectangular polylines. That means you can use list item, uh, first of all, list item, to get those rectangle, bleh, rectangular polylines uh, separated out as two different streams. And then I will explode them explode them into, um, into separate segments, right? This one, as well as this one. Bye. <laughs> uh, this one, as well as this one. Um, the segments are, well, actually, yeah, that, that, that will work. Because now we have like one line here, one line here, one line here, one line here, which means one, two, three, four points. Right? Four points equals a mesh phase. Very easy. Um, so we're going to actually be using this. For that, we need to separate out the lines. So I'm going to uh, graft and graft the segment output from our explodes. Great. And then I will use um, endpoints. Component to extract. Nope, that is not the one. To extract the endpoints. You know, of, of each of the line segment. Okay. That and that. We get ourselves the nice little endpoints. And I believe all we need to do is just merge them. And it's gonna be, let's say this is start and end, start and end. So to create a rectangle, we will need start, end, and start. So start, end, then end, and then start. So D3 and D4 are inputs are actually crossing, right? This this will make it a, a clean rectangle for each uh, pair of two line segments. Um, and for that, then we just straight up uh, construct mesh. Construct mesh, connect it like that. Voila, we have it. We have it working. We have ourselves um, a way of how we can create a loft, lofted mesh ribbon. And let me actually um, let's do one thing. One, one more thing. From this, I will simplify this. And I will create a mesh component here, just like that. I'm wondering if we need to do anything more to this. Yeah, these are separated out right now, so I'm just going to use trim tree. Actually, I'm going to use trim tree before the mesh component, like that. So now, in each data branch, there are four, one, two, three, four mesh faces. Great. All right, so this, this whole group here can actually be used for any two curves. Yeah, it's, it's just straight up going to work for any two curves uh, that contain the exact same amount of segments. So I'm, I can just make this into a cluster. I'm going to do that. So I'm just selecting all of them, except the mesh uh, output here. And I'm going to cluster them like that. And I'm just going to call the cluster. Oh, actually, I don't need to call the cluster. You know what it does. So our little cluster, uh, right click on the input and just say two polylines. And the output are mesh loft there we go mesh comes out 
So what do we do? Well, we just take it, copy, paste it, and instead of any loft, we use the, our, our little cluster. You can see here, 730 milliseconds, 58 milliseconds. A slight improvement, more than tenfold. Like that, and one more, like that. Okay, great. We have ourselves a bunch of meshes. Well, actually four, to be precise. And I will kind of scooch them together so that they are not, I don't need to scroll that much. There we go. That's a bit better. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's much better. Okay. So we, get, we have that. Let me just merge everything into one list. Not one list, but I basically I want um, all of the meshes inside every single diamond to be um, kind of joined into one, one mesh. Probably. Not really. Actually, I don't care if they are, but I'll still use merge for that. Yeah, I'll, I'll still use merge. So everything's kind of joined up. You can see how messy it is as well. We don't care. We will be flattening this out. Actually, I can even do it now. I'll just use flatten. Everything comes out uh, in one list. We will use Catmo Clark subdivision to uh, basically create even more sharpness and I know that right now this doesn't look great uh, let's actually hide everything except the Catmo Clark subdivision right now this doesn't look great trust me it's gonna be fine uh, because what we need to do is just for the smooth naked edges we need this to be uh, changed to zero like that so that it doesn't try to round it off it just creates more resolution, more polygons. More polygons equals a shape that holds itself better as you're creating a sub-D form. Okay, so as we have that, I will actually... Why the hell is it... It's grafting everything. Okay, sure. The output of Catmull Clark subdivision, I'm going to flatten that as well. And I will use Combine and Clean. Combine and clean tool right here. Just to merge everything into one big happy mesh. Very useful tool, by the way. It gets rid of all of the unnecessary crap as well and kind of welds everything together. From this, I will create a sub D, sub D from mesh component and uh, I will create sub-D geometry. So mesh comes in, sub-D gets spit out. Voila. If I were to bake this out, uh, we need this to be like arctic view. No, let's do shaded view. You can see it's pretty nice. Let's do some uh, emap shenanigans. Wait for it to have a stroke. Yeah, it's pretty clean, pretty nice. All right, so we have our topology working, right? Um, well, not really. Actually, we, we still have the triangles that we need to deal with, but I'm thinking for the triangles, can I just have like uh, try uh, not triangle <laughs> curve, uh, just a curve component like that, and let's create one more. I, I I need this to be clean, so I'm just gonna create one more curve component like that, and just drag it all the way to the end of my definition. So I'm basically just getting triangular curves here and I will borrow the same Catmull Clark subdivision 
uh, tool from 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 previously from previous from five minutes ago <laughs> and I will just take a gander as to what it does yeah great it just divides it up into three quads so I'm just gonna uh, holding down the shift key plug it into combine and clean and it's, it's just gonna be adding it into the mix as it's creating the sub D from mesh and at this point I just disable preview uh, of everything I sub the sub D and we have ourselves filled in corners uh, except for the actual corners which are being rounded off but hey can't win them all can't win them all anyway this is kind of good enough now it's time well it's time to to make a parametric thing <laughs> right what's the word parametric uh, pattern to actually ma make the tractor uh, pop I'm going to create a curve or actually two curves if it works with two curves uh, th these are random by the way if it works with two curves it's gonna work with like a million and I'm just gonna reference them in curve set multiple there we go I'm just gonna group it and call them um, attractor curves there we go attractor curves and for that uh, we will use the oldest trick in the book right pull point pull point and we basically want to control how high these points right here are being moved right how high are we moving these points so I'm just going to say well it's not gonna be a hundred right so we delete that it's gonna be some sort of a function um, so can we just do tractor curves give me a second okay so that's the geometry that pulls points are gonna be gotten from the list item those are the points that are gonna be moved and by how much is described through the distance right so if I just plug it in like that it's gonna be a little bit weird but you can see the effect immediately it already works but we need to um, you know be a little bit more um, soft <laughs> with our approach so the softness comes from using a graph mapper and two remaps remap numbers remap numbers one and two basically we remap the values um, into a range between zero and one so we remap the distances uh, from our source domain which is basically was the largest and was the smallest distance which is we can get it with bounds like that don't forget to flatten the bounds n input that's important to get the actual bounds and our target uh, domain is going to be between 0 and 1 so that's how we clamp the range to be in between 0 and 1 then with graph mapper we can actually um, choose graph type Bezier and we can actually distort it to something like perhaps like this something like that and then with our second remap then we can actually remap it to the actual values of how high do we want the do that to be right so I'm just going to here create a panel slash slash and type in the closer the panels are to the curve the closer they are to zero so they are they are not being moved at all the further they get away the higher they move so 0 to uh, let's go for 16 0 to 16 like that and then we use the remapped uh, version as our unit Z input like that 
And at this point, you can't really see... The, well, you can see it here. See? The bumpiness is here and next to the... Oh, sorry. The bumpiness right here, right? This is not flat. This is There is a bump here. But right next to the curve, it's almost completely flat. That's what we're aiming for. Okay, great. So this works. This works perfectly. Then... I will create two more attractor curves. Uh, let's just say something like that. Whatever, these two. Two more attractor curves. I will, actually I will just borrow all of this. The thing that we just created. Copy, paste, copy it down. And I will reference the two new attractor curves. Set multiple, just like that. And now we are going to deal with um, with this, the most inner uh, perimeter that's also being moved up, right? So instead of this static number for unit Z, we will be using a dynamic number from our graph mapper. So for that, uh, the point, uh, the pull point tool needs uh, the index three points to be regarded or to be uh, plugged in. And then it basically will calculate how close those points are to the two attractor curves that we've just uh, plugged in here. And it's going to spit out a value between 0 and 16. And in this case, I think it should be calmer. So let's say 0 to 8. Half of that. And just connect the remap numbers to the unit Z. Just like that. Now it's very um, kind of calm, very soft. If I were to bake this out and actually look at it, it's not going to be that calm. You will see like that. Let's change this to Arctic view. See, it's still, still working. But for some reason, it does feel like this is sticking out, but perhaps not too much. Let's just double check if I didn't make a mistake. Let's change this to 16. Big the big the sub D out. Move it here. Hmm. Perhaps it is how it should be. Wait, where are the curves actually? So it should be there and there. So it should be very aggressive here. And it is. Okay, so it is actually how it should be. Um, one more thing that I don't really like is how, it's, how it works around the perimeter. So I actually I'm going to use the perimeter curve. Let me change this to shaded view. I'm going to use the perimeter curve as well as uh, the two horizontal curves here and here. I will use three curves as my attractor curves for the uh, bottom distortion. Set multiple. There we go. Bake this out. Quick bake is the insert key on your keyboard, by the way. Yeah, that seems to be better. Yeah, that's, that's better, because now it, it basically tapers down, uh, tapers off, sorry, um, as it reaches the, the bottom. I should probably introduce it to the attractor curves here as well. So let me clear values, set multiple, one, two, three, enter. Insert, move this out, and yeah, it gets framed a little bit. That might be nice. 
Let's check it with my uh, trademarked <laughs> Evangelion Red uh, preview with a little bit of, of glossiness. Yeah, hey, why not? Why not? And all of this is doable in a, I think, at least. Well, actually, we need to check if it's uh, CNC millable out of um, 18 millimeter, ply uh, not plywood, uh, MDF board. Let's create a bounding box for this wall. Let's measure the distance, the height of this bounding box. 13 millimeters. That means we even have, we can even make this bigger, honestly. So for the, for the 0 to 16, I will increase this even further to 0 to 18, two more millimeters. So more, more, more aggressive. And then take a look at it. Zero, come on, I'm, I'm trying to find it. So this, this was 216, no, this needs to be calmer, 212, but the, the bottom one, uh, zero to 18. There we go, this should, be, this should do the trick. Insert, this is gonna be the final one. Great. Um, bounding box, losing my mind slowly, sorry, distance, 15 millimeters, that means there's still 3 millimeters of untouched area because MDF boards are 18 millimeters, um, great, great, that means um, this, this is definitely doable. Topology is kind of clean, and if we look at it with the Arctic view, you know, it definitely changes. So now let's, um, I'm, I'm just going to create a small test, and that's going to be like 50 centimeters, so 500 by 500, just like I did with my, um, with our previous um, tutorial. And I'm going to send it to CNC mill. And let's use, uh, let's say some, somewhere here, somewhere here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna try out this, this area right here. And to do that, um, <clears throat> let's, let's probably convert this into a closed, uh, you don't really need to, but I, I'll just show you how I will extract that particular panel and convert it into a closed a uh, poly surface as well as a closed mesh if I need to. Depends on what your um, CNC operator requires of you. So holding control shift I will be deleting most of the wall and only leaving the bit that I actually you know that I actually care care for then I will be um, two, using two nerves. That is not, <laughs> that, that was a very much incorrect way of doing it. Oh no, um, click that. Yeah, four views, there we go. I will be using two nerves, not toggle floating <laughs> viewport. Two nerves. Delete input objects, yes, enter, great. It, it creates a NURBS, not component, but whatever it's called. NURBS poly surface, NURBS poly surface is created. And then by using this rectangle, I can actually just straight up trim, trim away the outer perimeter just like that, easy peasy. Then I'll use the boundary, uh, dup boundary, DUP boundary, or DUP border, sorry, duplicate border. 
to get the outer perimeter of this um, shape. Then I will create a bounding box for it, like that. The bounding box, scale 1D, I will scale 1D the bounding box into 18 millimeters, you know, the size of the um, of the MDF board. And I will just, holding the control shift, do, uh, or sorry, extract surface, extract surface, extract the bottom surface of the of the bounding box. So now I know that this is the actual bottom of my MDF board and all I need to do is just do border for the bottom and just straight up curve, curve here, loft. And notice how this messes up quite drastically, <laughs> right? The, um, the ISO curves are all over the place. If that happens, then don't, uh, don't use the um, duplicated border of the bottom surface, but instead take the curve, uh, the border of your poly surface, copy it, let's say up, doesn't matter, copy it up, scale it using the gumball, scale it in Z to zero so that it's um, flattened out, you know, because if something scale is zero in a certain along a certain axis, it's flat, right? And then you move it down to the, oops, that was very messy of me. You move it down to the uh, bottom of your element, and then you just loft between the original curve and the flattened out version of that curve. And lo and behold, as you do that, all of the ISO curves are now gonna be aligned that's because the control point count matches up. Delete, join, cap the bottom, and there it is. If I show you uh, show this to you with EMAP, you can see that this is still pretty damn smooth. Let me show this to you with true sphere. I think it's G3 continuity, right? With sub D. I think sub D is G3 continuity, so it's hella smooth. All right, and that is that. Now we are going to send this to a CNC operator, and hopefully we're gonna get, you know, uh, like the, the, the board pretty, pretty soon. Um, yeah, it's going to take a while for me, but for you, it's going to be a few seconds. I'm back. And here it is. Wait, let's, let's try and... Ah, there we go. There we go. Yeah. Nice. So it, it plays with light quite well. And again, the quality is pretty nice. Um, and yet again, it's an hour to mill this, so it's it's not the fastest, but but we have found one issue, one small issue, and that is warping. Um, since the board is so thin after milling, it tends to warp just because the back side is untouched, right? So when you mess up the front side, the back side it has like uh, not tension. Or wait, is it tension? Either tension or compression. It adds it, so it warps the board. We will need to figure out how to fix the warping. Maybe you can see it. Eh, not sure. But uh, we will need to figure out how to fix the warping. But hey, here's the second one. Huh? Um, we are going to do quite a few more of these. But hopefully, the next one is going to be with my own CNC mill. So tune in for that. Yeah. I'll see you in the next one. Later.